Hi, I'm Shoestring Jay and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things thrifty, frugal and money saving and welcome back to Vlogmas Day 2. And today I thought I'd just show you a couple of recipes because, you know, money's tight this month. I don't want to spend a lot on food, so I'm trying to keep my grocery bill down. I'm just going to show you a couple of really, really inexpensive family meals that I make when I just want to use store cupboard ingredients or easy to obtain ingredients and I don't want to spend a lot of money. Here we go. So I'm going to make lentil and tomato soup and it's quite quick and pretty easy because these are things that I have anyway. So I've got eight ounces or about 200 grams of lentils. I'm going to use celery. The celery I've got just wrapped in wet kitchen roll. I find that keeps really well in the fridge like this with an old plastic bag on the bottom. I know you can stand them up in water, but I don't have space in my fridge to do that. So this is how I do it and it keeps it fresh because Lidl don't sell it in plastic bags now, which is good. Um, so I'm just going to use probably about like an onion's worth, if you like, of celery, chopped celery. I've got a couple of small onions. I mean, you could use more onions and less celery, not use celery at all. Um, I'm going to use, I don't know, it's probably three or four maybe cloves of garlic and a couple of cans of really cheap, simply chopped tomatoes just really cheap ones from i can't remember if that is little or aldi now i can't remember and some good stock which in this case is going to be this bouillon marigold bouillon i do like it this one it is a nice one sometimes i make my own stock but because i'm not eating meat anymore i don't tend to have the bones i used to make the stock with and i know i could make veggie stock but honestly this is so nice it makes such a good base for a soup so i'm making enough for about I'm going to say 10 to 12 portions. It depends. I might add, end up adding more liquid as we go. And I, I'll start off with liquid wise because, you know, you never tell with red lentils. I'm going to start with about maybe, I'll probably make up about three pints of, of the stock, but I might not use it all. So we'll, we'll see how I go because um, lentils do absorb a lot don't they red lentils depends how thick you like your soup as well um, and then if I think it does need more thickening once I'm making it I will add some mashed potato I have um, some instant mashed potato in my store cupboard that I use for thickening soups and it's really handy I wouldn't buy it again I bought it and thought actually I don't really want this in my store so I don't like it but um, that's what you could do you can add carrots to it it's quite nice if you're not a vegetarian you could add a bit of chopped cooked bacon so easy and it's so kind of satisfying as well as a soup anyway here we go okay I actually I'm gonna add carrots because I looked and thought well I bought carrots and I still have last week's carrots so I'm gonna just chop these up I'm gonna dice them up a bit I haven't bothered peeling them because they are organic carrots I got those from Aldi I, Aldi I find seem to be better than little organic stuff no, I lie. It's the other way around. A little are better at organic stuff than, than Aldi. I don't care if the skins are a little bit marked or anything. Yeah. All the vitamins are under the skin, as they say. These are so small, I don't to dice them. That's what I love about soups, actually, because you, you really can use anything in them. And it's a good way of using up bits and bobs. I didn't get them out in time today, but I have a freezer full of broccoli stalks. And every now and then I'll make a, a broccoli based soup. It's really nice with Stilton. So I'll probably collect up my broccoli stalks till after Christmas when we might have some leftover Stilton. won't blend this soup so I probably shouldn't make this too big. Probably a bit late now. <laughs> so these were for like four, they were smallish carrots you know. You could use a couple of large ones if you wanted to add carrots. I think my knife needs sharpening. Right, I'm going to get these just to saute a bit with the garlic. 
Okay, let's get my vegetables in. So I've got my celery, my onions, my garlic, and my carrots. I'm gonna leave those two saute for about five minutes or so. Not too long. This is in my big old stock pan. Everything looks, it looks, always looks like I'm making a tiny amount of everything in here, it's so big. Let's leave those going for a bit. So I'm going to add my lentils because they've been sautéing for long enough. I don't really want them frying for ages. Add that to my washing up pile. Lentils are amazing, aren't they? Because they always look like nothing. Looks like you've added nothing and you've added a ton of fibre and protein and they really swell up and give you a good hearty meal. I'm going to also add my tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes, but I haven't got any fresh tomatoes. I'm using store cupboard ingredients for this recipe. I'm also going to add my stock. I've had added a good blob of yeast extract, otherwise known as Marmite. I used the Tesco, I think it was, own brand, which is exactly the same thing. It's no different. Let's give that a bit of a stir. I'm adding my water. And the Marmite or yeast extract is good to add if you don't eat meat because you get a good blast of B vitamins or even if you do eat meat, it's good to have a good blast of B vitamins and a nice sort of savoury flavour as well. bring this to the boil and I've just reserved a little bit of this stock just to see if I need it all. Put that to one side. I'm going to add also some herbs and I might add a just general dried mixed herbs to this but I've got Italian style mixed herbs so they go nicely with tomato. And some black pepper. I'm not going to add salt until the end because obviously this the stock is salty. The yeast extract is salty as well and I don't want it to be too salty so I shall see and adjust it later. So I'm going to put the lid on, bring that to the boil, put, put the lid on, let it simmer for a bit, keep an eye on how the liquid is looking and at the moment this looks like a thin watery soup but those lentils will really puff up and create a nice filling thick soup so while that's doing I'm going to do the washing up and tidy up a bit so that's been bubbling away for about 35 minutes now which is enough I've added almost all of the stock I've just got a little bit left there but I don't think it needs to be any thinner so I'm going to let that cool and it tastes fine. I've tasted it. It's got enough salt in it, so I haven't added any more. I'm um, going to let that cool and then put it into containers, some of which will go in the freezer and some of which will stay in the fridge for the week. I think it's actually made. I mean, that's a, these are good portions. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm having one now. Ten portions of this soup and it's absolutely delicious. Perfect for what is an absolutely horrible day with a storm brewing. So the recipe I'm making here is really super, super easy, very cheap, doesn't involve many ingredients. So it's right up my street, in fact, and it's also in one pan, so even better. When you want something quick with that's not a fuss, you know, you don't want to faff around. This is really good. It's um, from the BBC Good Food website and it's called Easy Mushroom Pilau. And all you need, 
So I'm doubling up on their recipe, but their recipe is for one. So I'll tell you what theirs says. Three tablespoons of vegetable oil, one onion thinly sliced, five and a half ounces of mushrooms thickly sliced or halved, one to one and a half teaspoon of medium curry powder. I've got uh, this one from Tesco. Um, long grain rice, three ounces of half a vegetable stock or chicken stock cube so well i i'm using a whole one i was going to use two actually but maybe we'll just use one and uh 50 grams or one and three quarter ounces of frozen peas and then maybe some pepper in salt to taste i find that with the stock cubes i don't tend to need a lot of salt so it really really doesn't involve many ingredients at all um and it's very easy as i say so here we go so let's start by adding the garlic and the onion. And as you can see, I've actually replaced one of the onions because I'm doubling up the mixture with um, some celery because I can't eat too much onion. I love onion, but it doesn't really agree with me. This really looks like a lot of mushrooms now that I've doubled up on the quantity but you know mussels uh, mushrooms do shrink down to not much at all don't they plenty. okay so these have cooked down a bit now I'm going to add the curry powder. I'm doubling up, remember, so the recipe said one, one to one and a half. I'm going to do three. And this is a medium curry powder I'm using. Obviously, you can use more or you can use a stronger one or a milder one, depending on your taste. And this is to serve two people now. So the original recipe was a one-person recipe. So this will serve two people now. So you can see the mushrooms are actually reducing down quite a lot so I've allowed that to cook just for a minute or so with the curry powder in it now I'm going to add my rice so it's just normal long grain white rice you could do it with brown rice but you would need to obviously cook it for longer it does make a very juicy dish with the amount of, of stock that you put in this. So, so I think it would probably be okay if you didn't want it to be quite a sort of such a runny rice dish. I mean, if you bought pilau rice at the Indian, it wouldn't be juicy. But I think if it's a one, it's just a meal in itself. You don't want it too dry because you're not going to have a sauce on top. Okay, so I'm going to add stock and this looks like a lot of stock as I say but it all kind of comes it works in the end I'll add it bit by bit so I added about three quarters of the of the rice of the stock to the rice and the mushrooms and everything I'll bring that to the boil and then see if it needs more So the recipe says peas. I have chopped up some red pepper or any color pepper actually, and added that when I fried up the vegetables early on. You could also add some spinach at this point if you wanted to. If you wanted to make it a bit more substantial, you could put in a bit of potato. Okay, I'm gonna leave that for about another five minutes and then just review how it's all looking. So at this point, the mushrooms are all cooked. The rice needs a bit longer and I've just tasted it and I feel like it needs a little bit of salt. I guess it depends how salty your stock cube is. Just a little bit of salt for me. And I like it about this wet actually. So because I'm going to give it another five minutes, I'm going to add the rest of the stock. May as well. I like it quite juicy but it depends how how juicy you like it so it's almost like a it's kind of becomes a bit of a stew it's not really like pilau rice like you'd buy in the the Indian restaurant at all <laughs> I'm gonna leave the lid off and just leave that 
on the go for about five more minutes. So it's such a super, super quick and easy recipe, this one. Proof of the pudding is in the eating. Let's give it a try. Mm. I love mushrooms in any form. And for the, this is just really comforting. It's a really nice winter warmer. So I've made this three or four times since I discovered the recipe and I really like it being kind of juicy, as I said. So don't see it as a side dish, see it as a main dish. And it's such a cheap one. So hopefully your family will enjoy it. This is just enough for two people, although it's two really large portions. I would say doubling up really makes three or perhaps two portions and one for someone's lunch the next day. So I hope you enjoyed those cheap and easy recipes and I'd love to hear about yours. Great recipe ideas in the comments below. Personally, I don't eat any meat at the moment or hardly any. So any veggie ones are good for me, but obviously share with the community. Um, I need to do day two of the reverse advent calendar. And I explained this yesterday that I am putting something in every day leading up to Christmas and beyond actually. Um, to the end of December and then I'll take it down to the food bank. So today's item, something they always want, is some soap. So I'm sticking some soap in my little bag with my carrots and peas from yesterday. Two items in my bag and hopefully that will be appreciated. I'm going to keep it going say to the end of the month and then take it for the new year when I think they may be a bit short of stuff. So Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me the thumbs up and I'll see you tomorrow for day three of Vlogmas. See you then. Bye for now.